What I want to show you is how evolution is like poker. Both poker and evolution take a random selection of variables, like these cards, and they make non-random selections within them. Let me show you. I'm going to play five card draw. Let's just draw five cards. Oh, got a pair. Pair of sevens. That could be good. Yeah, let's go for the pair of sevens. Now imagine these five cards uh, are a population of animals in an ecosystem. Say they're frogs in a pond. And uh, they, this is the first generation of frogs and they're gonna give birth to another generation of frogs. But which ones are gonna make it to reproductive age? Now this is just a random selection. I've just randomly dealt these out. But the selection of those which make it through is non-random because I'm playing poker and I choose these two. So these three poor little froggies, they die. They don't make it to reproductive age. Don't want those. And these two do. So we're going to assume that the next generation inherit the sevens and then evolution tells us that through mutations and, and allele swapping, we get more variation after that. So let's do the draw. Oh, look, another pair. There we go. So, not a bad hand. A couple of pairs, kind of low-scoring pairs, a couple of pairs, that's not bad at all. And what we can see from this poker hand is that we've got a fitter generation. We've got a better set of frogs in our pond. But notably, it's random, it's, it, the, all the variables are random, and there's one non-random bit, which was, the, which was the, deciding which ones we, we kept for the draw and which ones we discarded. That could be because these frogs were better at finding food, or these frogs were better at finding a mate, or these frogs were better at running away from a predator. That's how evolution works. We've got a nice hand there.